Hello and welcome to the lecture on educational finances in grant in aid system. In today's lecture, we shall get an insight into grant in aid GIA system of education. We will acquaint students with the operational and functional flaws in GIA education system. We shall also have a historic overview of GIA education. And finally, we shall evaluate the means that can reform GIA sector of education. First of all, let us understand grant and aid. Education is the first and foremost concern of the developed and developing nations of the world. Many efforts have been made to make education accessible to every child or adolescent. Yet most of the world's population remain inaccessible to this basic facility. Indian government is also exerting almost its every possible resource to make education widespread. One of the steps taken to improve the education system was that of establishing granted or aided schools or institutions and the history dates back to colonial India. Besides government schools, private schools as well as government aided private schools were left to flourish with the objective of providing education to larger population that would include underprivileged sections of society and for this purpose grant and aid was given to private schools that asked for the same. Grant in aid is a financial assistance provided by center to voluntary organizations or private bodies through state government for certain projects or programs that ought to be directed or indirectly beneficial to the masses. However, the grant in aid recipients have to abide by some guidelines issued by the governing bodies. According to Government of India, grant and aid are payments, transfers or devolution of funds in cash or in kind in the nature of donations or contributions by one government to another government, body, institutions or individual grantee. And as per the Article 275 and 282 of Constitution, the Central Government of India releases this grant and aid from its consolidated funds. In other words, we can see that when a private education sector is being provided public subsidies, it is said to be grant and aid education system. Hence, Grant and aid is not any kind of loan and thus is not required to be repaid. Education in India is provided through direct government provision, private unaided schools and private schools that receive grant and aid. These schools need to operate according to the GIA code that may include timely inspection of schools by government authorities, regular parent-teacher meet, check on prescribed syllabus for students and monitoring proposed salaries of teachers. A school becomes eligible for receiving grant and aid only when it qualifies the minimum parameters set by government and for that purpose it has to run on its own with the requisite infrastructure and teaching facilities for the prescribed period. Earlier while establishing an education institute, greater contribution came from the private body itself and government used it to provide part of capital and recurrent costs. Later on, from 1960, GIA included teachers' salaries. Besides, demand for making GIA teachers' salaries equivalent to those of government teachers was raised by several states which first started by Kerala. In India, considerable progress has been made in expanding education through grant and aid institutions. However, overall accessibility and equity remains in question. 
the flaws within GIA system and fiscal stress forced government to restrict establishment of new GIA institutions and also cut on subsidies on already established ones. Before proceeding further, let us have overview of grant and aid in education. The system of providing financial assistance to private educational institutions in India was initiated by the British in 1858-59 to as one of the steps towards apparently reforming the education system in order to serve their larger interests. It was Wood's dispatch in which the suggestion of establishing grant and aid private schools was made. Charles Wood, the president of Board of Control of East India Company, recommended various reforms in Indian education system in mid-19th of century and one of them was that of establishing GIA schools. He made these suggestions in a dispatch which properly came to be known as Wood's Dispatch and sent it to the then Governor General Lord Delauzi. Originally, the grant and aid institutions were supposed to be non-profit establishments, but with the passage of time, this status eroded. Later, Article 28, 29 and 30th of the Constitution proved to be a big boon for setting up grant and aid private education sector. Under these provisions, minorities based on religion and language were allowed to establish schools to preserve their respective culture and vernacular language and ask for assistance from the government for the same. However, they were not allowed to deny any admission to a student purely on the language background and religious basis. This made occurrence of GIA institutions ubiquitous. Ambitions other than education itself characterized the initiation of grant and aid institutions by private individuals like gaining access to political circles. GIA code framed in the beginning included providing financial support to cover part of teachers' salary and other recurrent costs and private managements were required to finance all the capital costs and part of recurrent costs and the same process was put into service for several decades. After 1950s, Kerala started the reform process of GIA system of education with the main objective of bringing salaries of GIA teachers at par with those of government teachers and making maximum use of GIA institutions. Now, GIA institutions were provided with funds that were allocated for teacher salaries and also part of recurrent capital cost was given. Several states emulated Kerala for reforming their GIA education system. Due to fiscal burden, many states in 1992-93 started restricting the establishment of new GIA institutions instead of government-allowed unaided private sector to substitute GIA system. However, desired results were not obtained. Now coming to distribution of GIA institutions. Distribution and service of GI institutions is uneven in terms of equity, number, enrollment of students and level of education across different states. Usually marginalized sections rarely go beyond primary level of education and in states like Orissa, GIE system almost excludes primary level which means zero participation of lower groups in GIE system of education. Apart from this, some states make less use of GIE schools at primary and even secondary levels thereby minimizing the chances of poor 
getting enrolled in these schools and thereby proving more supportive to richer groups. In contrast to these various states have tried to make judicious use of GIE system of education by providing subsidies to primary and secondary levels equally as that of higher levels. Kerala tops the list where GIE service for education has been put to maximum use. If we go by the number, Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh and Kerala have 14,500, 10,000, 8,000 GIA institutions respectively as per data collected in 2000 and 2001. Kerala has 50% of GIA institutions at all levels of education while as Maharashtra and Uttar Pradesh has approximately 50% aided institutions at secondary and higher secondary levels as the aided institutions at the primary level are negligible. West Bengal, Gujarat, Odisha and Karnataka have very little GIA sector of education at primary level except West Bengal, where considerable number of GIA schools are found at this very level. However, all of these states entirely depend on aided institutions at secondary stage. Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Haryana, Punjab and Rajasthan overall makes little to moderate use of GIA sector. A small GI sector is found in Himachal Pradesh, Assam and Bihar at both the levels. If we talk about rural and urban ratio of GI education sector, in terms of distribution, same unevenness is observed that is in some states GI education system serves urban population more than rural areas, while in other states rural parts are paid more attention than urban ones. Further, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes are not benefited as they should be because except Kerala where 50% of SCST students are enrolled in GI institutions according to their population share. Other states present poor picture in terms of GI service to these sections. Enrollment of SCST students is greater according to population share. In private aided sector rather than in unaided sector and highest in government institutions indicating their preferences due to financial constraints. At higher level of education that is college and universities. 42% are private aided institutions with 37% enrollment. The irregular distribution is similar across the states as that of primary and secondary levels. Recent years have shown tremendous expansion of enrollment in rapidly growing higher education in private unaided sector or self-financing courses. Inconsistency in distribution across levels of education and different states is a major challenge that needs to be responded promptly. Significant part of public education budget is spent in giving subsidies to private education sector. Then we have scope for reform. Heavy surge in GIA institutions in India after independence made it difficult to be managed properly consequently making it predisposed to many malpractices like corruption, nepotism, etc. Weak mechanism of monitoring made it worse. Other issues like those of teachers' salaries and appointments compromised quality of education in states like Uttar Pradesh and Orissa where many instances of no student from an institution qualifying the secondary examination have come to the fore. Inequitable distribution of subsidized educational institutions across the different states and levels of education where rich seem to get more benefited than poor, more attention given to supply side like providing capital costs and teacher salaries rather than the demand side those of giving merit-based scholarships and providing grants to 
popular courses and above all growing burden on garment exchequer evoked vices raising within and outside garment circles against the public subsidization of private educational institutions and the garment consent to the process of restricting GIA in education sector if not eliminating it altogether literally commenced in 1990s decade. However, restricting public subsidies cannot be elucidative in easing physical burden and curb inappropriateness as education is considered to be the facility of paramount importance that a government could provide to its people. Investing in education has a long term and huge returns. It can be best exemplified that more educated population a country possesses, lesser will be the burden on health budgets, lesser will be the wastage of resources and many other benefits that would directly or indirectly provide boost to the physical growth rather than stressing it. Thus, instead of containing or eliminating grant and aid, we should look for options to reform this sector so that our main objective of making education accessible is not hampered. Now coming to some of the attempts that could pave way for smooth functioning of GIA education system to rein corrupt practices like presenting fictitious enrollment of students in GIA schools to justify inflated number of teachers post and this is mostly found in states of Uttar Pradesh and Orissa. This could be achieved through strict monitoring and enforcing law stringently. Regular parent teacher meets may prove fruitful. Next is to encourage GIA private management to generate their own resources so that the burden on government is somewhat lightened and also not to tie teachers salary wholly and solely to GIA. Next is to release funds for any GIA institute it becomes imperative to see it performing satisfactorily in terms of providing quality education and have requisite infrastructure. A thought needs to be given to overall performance based grants. For this purpose, accountability of teachers and private management is must. Next is to enhance the budget on popular and job oriented courses and cut on those being obsolete. To ensure uniform public subsidization of education across all levels so that disadvantaged sections are also benefited. Before I take you leave, let us quickly recap what we have discussed today. We learned that grant and aid is a financial assistance provided by centered to voluntary organizations or private bodies through state government for certain projects or programs that ought to be directly or indirectly beneficial to the masses. Further, we discussed grant and aid in education, distribution of GIA institutions and statewide share of grant and aid expenditure in public education budget. At last, we discussed scope for reforms in GIA and attempts that could pave way for functioning of GIA education system. That's all. Thank you.